So let's talk about supplemental lifts today. Some of you have heard that word, supplemental lift, and what does it mean and how is it different from accessory movements or accessory lifts? A supplemental lift is a variation on the main lift. So it's a lift that looks like a squat, but isn't exactly a competition squat, or it looks like a deadlift, or a bench press, or a press, but isn't exactly that. And the reason we choose it is because we're trying to find where we're weak and make it strong. So for example, for the squat, good supplemental exercises might be something like a box squat, or a pause squat, or a pin squat, or a tempo squat. For the bench press, good supplemental exercises might be something like a floor press, or a board press, or a slingshot bench press, or a close grip bench press. All of these things look like a bench press, but aren't quite a bench press. For press, we like things like rack lockouts or pin presses or press lockouts are all the same thing, just with different names. Something like a press start, maybe a purely strict press, maybe a seated strict press. And for the deadlift, our primary supplemental choices are the deficit deadlift and the rack pull. A deficit deadlift is gonna have a longer range of motion than a normal deadlift, but not by much, just an inch or two. And a rack pull is gonna have a shorter range of motion than a deadlift, also maybe two or three inches shorter, up to four or five inches shorter, but almost always the bar will start just below the kneecaps. Now here's the question, why do we need to do these at all? If all we ever do is perform the main exercises, two, three, four days a week, eventually we burn out on the main exercises. And much of that is just emotional, it's, it's mental. My clients, you, me, I want some variation in my training. But if I get too much variation, if I go to something crazy, if I decide a supplemental lift looks like a one-legged BOSU ball squat holding dumbbells up in the air, that really looks nothing like a regular squat and therefore, it doesn't carry over to make my squat stronger. So I wanna choose exercises that are very, very similar to the main exercises, but slightly different. They will often use a greater range of motion and thus a slightly lower weight than what you would use for the main exercises, or they'll use a reduced range of motion and a higher weight. So the main stressor of a supplemental lift is either gonna be via greater range of motion, therefore greater time under tension, or if it's a partial range of motion, it will be from an increase in intensity. Now, why do we do this? To find the weak point. When I prescribe a supplemental exercise for my clients and they particularly struggle with one, they often come back and are sort of sad and depressed and thought they would do better. And I get super excited because I found a weak point. I found a place that they are weak that we must make them strong. You've heard the old adage many, many times that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. If someone is weak in a particular range of motion and we make that strong, then if that range of motion was the weakest part of the lift, it's no longer the weakest part of the lift. So we get strong in the place where we were weak. So finding the weak point in a supplemental exercise is the most important part of the supplemental exercise. And then performing that lift in a way so that it looks like the regular lift will make it so that it carries over best to that regular competition base lift. It'll carry over better to the squat, the bench press, the press, and the deadlift. That's how we use supplemental exercises. So when you think about choosing supplemental exercises, ones are either going to elongate the range of motion or shorten the range of motion. If you think about it, there's really only a handful of those that you can do for each lift. Maybe just two you could do for each lift. We can use different modalities, things like the rack or the pins or boards or whatever, and that will allow us to do sort of the same thing with different equipment. These few exercises will help contribute best to making me stronger on the main lifts. That is a supplemental exercise. Another important aspect of supplemental lifts is that they are for intermediate and advanced lifters only. We don't use supplemental lifts for novice or even early intermediate lifters. We begin to change intensity and volume post novice linear progression for our lifters before we change exercise selection. This is really important. To learn more about the main lifts and how to perform them, click the link right here to learn how to squat, deadlift, 
bench press, and press.